Each time he gets a little closer, each time another detail falls into place. Now the trap works against the Herald of Darkness. old gods of Asgard. I still don't quite know what to make of them. I know they used to be rock stars who modeled their stage personas after Norse gods. I know they're old. I know that in their day they fought the darkness as I do. I know they're demented and insane, ravaged by age and self-abuse. But there's something in them, something powerful that took hold when they were touched by the powers beyond. A thing that goes far beyond just stage names. Something godlike. Right on cue, bubbling to the surface from untold depths, the horrors. The emerging monsters do not expect the warm reception that has already been prepared for them. Saving Emma.
Getting the Andersons into the recording studio was a struggle and a half. But once they actually picked up the instruments, something happened. They were two old men, and they weren't. They were doddering bags of bone, and they were barely contained power. And there was music. Barry rubbed his hands together. He knew how to pick a winner. Now all they needed was some direction on how to make things a little more modern. Barry had never produced a thing in his life, but he knew what he liked. He knew Balance Slays the Demon was going to be a hit. I've seen the darkness twist flesh into new shapes before, but encountering these giants is an extremely disturbing experience. It's as if the genre has been switched on me. There's something out of Pulp Fiction, twice as tall as normal men and stronger than forklifts. Their lumbering gait and slow-witted demeanor brings to mind some kind of mean-spirited caricature of a feeble-minded hillbilly. Thanks for saving me again. I'd hate to die before I'm scheduled to be murdered. I guess I have you to thank for setting everything up at the oil derrick. Yeah, well, I figured that if we were going to go over this again, we might as well try to be smart about it, huh? I appreciate it. You took a big chance doing that. You okay? What do you think? I've died twice. I remember everything pretty clearly now. You said I was gonna be okay. I don't know what happened. Well, it's not your fault. I think one of those, what did you call them? The, the takers? I think they did something to the power and they got me that way. I'm sorry. But I got the keys from the dead guy in that room. And I'm not handing them over until you do something about this. I'm sick of getting killed. Fair enough. You seem calmer now. I tried freaking out. Didn't do much good for me. I guess you get used to the craziest stuff. Good for you. Plus I figured I'd take the edge off, you know? Mm-hmm. Those herbal supplements are pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. I wanted to try to explain things to you now, since you're calmer, but maybe this isn't the best time after all. Oh, shit. Yeah. Better not get all metaphysical on me now. Seriously, I'm like two sentences away from thinking how we could all be like atoms on God's skin or something. Or figments of somebody's imagination? Um, wow. Uh... I'm just gonna try to chill out and not think about that or, or getting murdered or anything, if you're cool with that. Gotcha. Emma wasn't sure exactly when the man arrived at the motel. But from what she could tell, the party started almost immediately. It was infectious, spreading from one room to another. He was mercurial, almost as if he was flickering through the scene, telling a joke here, throwing an insult there, oozing sex and violence and excitement. 
She had never seen someone like this before. He looked at her and smiled, and she felt her heart flutter a little. She knew he was the kind of man mothers warned their daughters about, but she told herself it didn't matter. Okay. I really don't think they can get to the power now. Thank you. That's a relief. Um, here's the keys that you needed. Thank you. Hey, I have to tell you. At the diner, I, I went there with him. The guy who looks like you, okay? I know I said that I didn't. Yeah, I figured. Wanna talk about what happened at the diner? There was this guy from the observatory, and... He just attacked the poor dude, smashed his face into the tabletop a bunch of times. It was horrible. I... I didn't know that he was gonna do that. I swear. And I just ran. I just left him there. I didn't even try to help. There was nothing you could have done. It's not your fault. Well, he's dead in that motel room now, so excuse me if I feel pretty shitty about it anyway. You shouldn't blame yourself. I just didn't want to get involved. I have this tendency to just... Drop everything and run. I don't think I'm a bad person, but I... I didn't even call the cops. I'm such a coward. If you'd called the cops, we'd have dead cops. He's not human. Do you understand? It's not your fault. But I could have tried to stop him. Believe me, if you had, you'd be dead. You seem to be doing a little better now. Yeah, I guess it just got easier once I got this thing off my chest. I just feel so guilty about it, especially because I didn't pick up on any of the warning signs. I just really liked hanging out with him, you know? He was smart and charming and funny and hot. The way you could be, I guess. I guess. What's the deal with this guy anyway? He looks like you, he uses your name. Why does he do this stuff? I'm not sure myself. Maybe he's just evil or my dark half. He does a lot of the stuff I'm trying really hard to get away from. Things that just messed up my life. I guess all those murders don't help either. Yeah, I could do without the murders in the end of the world. Listen, I need to get going. Yeah, go. I think I'm good now. I hope. Good luck. If it all goes well, maybe this is the last time we meet like this. God, wouldn't that be great? Just keep those lights on, okay? The fate of countless individuals hangs in the balance, threatened by the machinations of the Herald of Darkness. And yet, for a moment, the Champion of Light breathes a little easier. He has saved one life. For this moment, it is enough. And soon, perhaps, he can put an end to this. Returning to the observatory for what he hopes is the final time, the man feels anticipation and dread in equal measure. Soon, he knows he will have what he needs. Hello, 
Hello, I was expecting you. I've already taken care of the imaging array, but you should still look into securing the primary coolant flow. With some luck, you may be able to light the area before these things even show up. Ready to look into the sky. Right there, Doctor. This act of creation is exhilarating and frightening. Subtext and symbols loom eager to take effect. Causality and consequence become domino chains that stretch into infinity. The more fundamental the change, the more unpredictable the variables become. Reality is too complex to control completely. Ordinary questions become meaningless. Who created who? What is really real? Everything is as real as everything else. You learn to let go of the things you can't control and go with the flow or go insane.